What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture, and we have another top 10 comic book countdown. This time, we're counting down the top 10 comics to invest in before Fantastic Four make their MCU debut. This is probably one of the biggest debuts to be announced in the MCU. I know we are all excited for this one. This video is part one in a two-part series. We're going to be counting down 10 through 6 today. This is how we're going to look at these books and how we're going to count them down. As we get lower and lower in number, these books are going to be getting hotter and hotter and hotter because we are looking at current fair market value today next to fair market value from five years ago. And those that have increased in value the most are going to be lower on the list. Before we get into the books, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below as well. I'm going to be giving a big shout out to all of the members of my channel via YouTube and Patreon at the end of this video. Now, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, the Otis app. And before we get into the five books on the list today, I'm going to take just two minutes to talk about the Otis app. App. All right, everyone. So you asked, what is Otis? Otis is a stock market for cultural assets where almost anyone can buy and sell shares of rare collectibles, sneakers, and art, and of course, comic books. They have over 100 rare items to choose from and add new assets every single week. So check this out. This is how it works. First, you got to download the app and sign up for free to follow the weekly drops. You can then buy shares of the latest drops directly from Otis, or you can buy shares from past drops from other Otis members. You can then earn a potential return by selling your shares to other Otis members, or if Otis sells the underlying asset for more than the price at which you bought your shares, that is a way to where you can earn that potential return on investment. So let's go ahead and look through some of the comic books that they have listed. You guys can see all kind of blue chip keys right here. Let's go over a couple. How about this amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one? You guys get to look at last six months. You can see that there's been an increase of 6.2 Two five dollars. It gives you trading stats, 52-week high, and so forth. You can also go in and learn more about the book. It gives you details about the comic book itself. It gives you recent news. So if there's any speculation going on because of, you know, live action or cartoons or whatnot. All right, let's go ahead and look at a second book. Let's pull up my grail, my personal grail. It makes Spider-Man number 129. Right now, you can get shares at $33.33. That's up about 33% in the last six months. Again, you can see highs and lows. And then going into the details of the book, the highlights of the comic itself, and of course, recent news. There's definitely some speculation going on with Punisher in, in the MCU right now, for sure. And of course, all the Spider-Man news. So you guys can see exactly how you can earn those potential returns now, the good thing about this sponsorship is that you all can sign up with the Otis link that is in the description below, and you can get your first share free when you fund your account, and of course, terms apply. So I highly recommend signing up, getting that first share for free, and at least checking it out. This is a good opportunity for all of us that enjoy investing in comic book. All right, everyone, let's get in to these books, starting off with number 10, and that is Fantastic Four, number 107. All right, you all probably know that I like to focus on some books that are more easy on the average collector's pocketbooks. A lot of us are priced out of big first appearances. Sometimes I focus on the next best thing, and that's why this book is on the list. This is the second appearance of Annihilus, but it is also his first appearance of continuity. This book is an affordable book that definitely has to spec value. There's already been a lot of rumor about Annihilus showing up in the MC at some point in time. My humble opinion, I do believe that is going to happen sometime down the road. When? We never know. But all of these things are on the table for the MCU to, to take and put into these films and in this connected universe, right? Let's look at the numbers for this book. So it's very interesting. Not too many um, graded books on the market, on the census, so I don't have any recent sales. But five years ago, there was a 9.8 that sold for $196. But let's look at the average raw, $20 average. And for those that don't understand what average raw is, again, this is all of the raw 
sales, no matter grade, added up and then divided by how many sales there were. That's how you get an average. All right. So again, take it with a grain of salt. I always say that there's some grade of this book out there that you could probably find in that average price range. This price range being the $20. High Raw sitting at $75. So again, this is definitely uh, an affordable book, a 15 center, a beautiful, beautiful green cover on this. If Annihilus does show up in the MCU, watch for this book to gain value as well as all the big keys surrounding the character as well. Let's move on to number nine, and that is Fantastic Four number 45. This is the first appearance of the Inhumans. All right, this is a huge book. Let's look at the numbers, and then I'm gonna talk about why I put it on this list. Current CGC, fair market value in an 8.5. And again, keep in mind, this is a, I, I do believe this book came out in 65, maybe late 64, early 65. $1,961, current fair market value in that 8.5. Five years ago, $1,536. That is a 28% increase. So a nice little bump there. Average raw sitting at about $170. High raw sitting at $550. All right. Why did I put this book on the list? We already had Marvel Television attempt to do an Inhumans TV show uh, under, you know, a, under the ABC. It did not pan out whatsoever. I personally watched two episodes and I couldn't watch anymore. I don't know about you all. If you guys watched that show, let me know what your let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Even if you enjoyed it, I want to hear. I might try to watch it again at some point. I don't know. I know that Kevin Feige has talked about in the past where what, when he gets his characters brought into the MCU, you know, he likes to stay true uh, to, to to the source material, but he also likes keeping it fresh. One thing that he's pointed out recently is X-Men and how the X-Men are going to debut in the MCU. He says it's not going to look the same that you've seen it under the Fox films and the Fox franchise. So we've already seen an, an attempt at the Inhumans. Does that mean Feige's going to bring them back right away? Well, look, here's the thing. That attempt, I think, is easily forgettable, unlike a Fox 20-year franchise, right, when it comes to the X-Men. So I do think there's a possibility of, of us seeing the Inhumans sooner than later. And you also have to piece together everything that's going on with the Eternals film coming, with Fantastic Four coming. There's definitely more at play and more at stake for the Inhumans to show up sooner than later so that's why i put this book on this list because look it is already a big book it's obviously a silver age key as you can see here it doesn't need movie hype to increase in value year after year and long term but boy if we get any hint at the inhumans any inhumans in the mcu watch this book take off all right let's go in to number eight on the list, and that is Fantastic Four number 27. This is a very, very interesting book because although it is an, an early Silver Age Fantastic Four, it's not a huge key when you think of big Silver Age Fantastic Four keys. This is the first Fantastic Four Doctor Strange team up. Again, we're going to look at the numbers and I'm going to talk about why I put this book on the list. Current CGC in a 9.0. Fair market value sitting at about $900. Five years ago, that was sitting at around 650. That's a 38% increase. So look at these increases. They're getting higher as we move along, right? Average raw sitting at about $102. High raw sitting right at about that $400 mark at $399. So, you know, it's not too big on your pocketbooks. This is decently affordable for being a, a pinnacle of, of a Doctor Strange Fantastic Four team up. Why is this book on the list? Well, you may have already guessed it. Doctor Strange right now is a, a key foundation of the future from this point on of the MCU. So much is riding around Doctor Strange, right? You got the multiverse, you know, you got even the horror genre, which all of these things don't sp specifically relate to Fantastic Four. But because I feel that Doctor Strange is becoming this key player, we don't have a Tony Stark anymore. We don't have that Iron Man. We don't have Steve Rogers, Captain America, even though we have Sam taking the, taking the mantle. 
Doctor Strange, I believe, is going to be a key player, at least over the next few years still, until a lot more of these characters get introduced. And I think a Doctor Strange meeting up with Fantastic Four is something that, if and when happens, which I feel is inevitable, can definitely have eyes be looking at this book, and it can definitely jump in value. And again, this is another one that I just think is a Silver Age book that, as you see right here from the numbers over the last five years, it doesn't need movie hype to continue to increase in value. But if something happens in the movies, that puts extra eyes on it. So this is another one that could be going under the radar right now that if there is something that happens movie-wise, MCU-wise, that percentage of increase can start increasing faster and faster. Now, before I go in to the last two books on this list, I'm going to make my statement as I always do. I am not here to tell anyone to buy anything. Don't just hear what I'm saying, talking about these books, and go buy them because I'm talking about it. I'm here to present you data, facts, and my own personal opinion sprinkled in. You all have to take in everything that I'm saying, do your own research, and ask yourself, do you enjoy these characters? Do you enjoy the books? And are you willing to take the risk if it's all about the investment? All right? You do all those things. You make sure that you make decisions that you can live with. Okay? Now, with that being said, let's move in to number seven. This is probably my favorite on the list. This is Fantastic Four, number 51. The first mention, technically first appearance, so to say, of the negative zone. We know that the negative zone is big in Fantastic Four lore. This is something that I feel has to be brought to the MCU. But again, that's just my personal opinion, all right? I think it has to be brought to the MCU. It means so much to the Fantastic Four franchise. Now let's look at these numbers. Current CGC, 9.0 fair market value, sitting at $383 five years ago. $263, that's a 46% increase in value. Solid, right? Average raw, 33 bucks. High raw, $275. So look, again, Silver Age book, 12 center. Uh, average raw, maybe you can get a lower mid-grade copy still for that $33 range right around there. That's solid. That is very solid. So again, what's the theme of the four books shown so far? No real movie hype around them yet, and yet they are increasing in value year after year. So again, if the Fantastic Four show up in the MCU, which we know they're going to in the next few years, if the negative zone happens, all right, and comes into play, this book, again, more eyes are going to be turning to this book. So, all right, we have one more book today, counting down. 10 through 6. Let's just get right to it. Number 6 on the list is Fantastic Four number 140, The Origin of Annihilus. So again, if you're priced out of the first appearance, the or origin books are really getting more sought after. We've really been seeing that over really, I would say, the last five years, but especially over the last a year and a half, especially during the COVID market. That's what I'm calling it right now, the COVID market, right? Origins have been sought after, okay? And I've seen a lot of origins boom. So let's look at the numbers of this book. Current CGC 9.6, sitting at $175, not too shabby. Five years ago, $111. So, you know, again, that, that's a 58% increase, all right? This is a 20-cent Bronze Age book. That's solid. But look at these average raw numbers, $12.00. And a high raw for 15. Now, keep in mind, that high raw doesn't mean it's a high grade. I can probably guarantee you that it wasn't a high grade. It might have been more of a, maybe a, a high mid grade. But uh, I, I don't think that a high raw of this book is selling for $15 right now. Um, you know, anything from a 9.0 up, anything around that near mint. Uh, the market right now, even for, you know, just standard 15 to 20 cent books and Bronze Age books. It's it's kind of creeping up. So, you know, you might still have the opportunity to go dig through some back uh, back bins in, in your local LCSs and find this book for a good value. 
but you know, if you're looking on eBay, if you're looking online, live sales, you're probably going to be looking at a higher premium for this book. But again, for me, I'm not a stickler for high grade. Everything doesn't need to be high grade. If you can find this book in a decent presenting copy for under $20, I still think that is a steal again. Personally, I think Annihilus, it's inevitable that we're going to see the character in the MCU. So again, another decently affordable book to snatch up that has, again, precedent of having long-term increase in value, return on investment, right? And has awesome spec value and spec possibilities as well. So with that being said, that's the five books for today. I cannot wait to count down five through one. Let me know in the comments which books you all have, which ones are on your radar or you're hunting right now. And let me know if there's any books that you thought should have been on this list that you didn't see. Maybe they're five through one. I also am going to hint to the fact that you didn't see a key character that is very, very important to the Fantastic Four franchise. You didn't see that character in any of these five books, and there's a reason for that, and I'm going to talk about that in part two of this video series when we count down five through one. So I hope you guys, again, if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell so you can hop on the video when I do the five through one countdown, hopefully sometime next week. You guys will be seeing that, but before we end the video today, like I said, in the beginning of the video, I got to give a big shout out to all of my member supporters. First off, all my Patreon members. Again, thank you all so, so much for the support week after week. I will be giving a slab, a CGC slab away for my next patron only contest, most likely towards the end of July. So again, a big shout out to each and every one of you. Let's name you all off. Jonathan Griffin, X11 Bravo, Shelby Asher, The World's Enemy, Timothy, Ramsey vs. Comics, Kenneth, Rich, Tony, Marty, Larry, Serge, Michelle, Jacob, Tyler, Keith, Jeremy, Michael, Jeff, Tricky Clicky, Alvin, Fletch, Joshua, Pedro, Peter, Joe, Larissa, Soggy, Dan, Bishner, and Simon. Ooh, that's getting tough. I keep getting more and more of you every month. It's getting tough to say them all, but hey, again, I appreciate each and every one of you. And to also my YouTube channel members. And again, if you guys are interested in becoming a member of the channel via Patreon or YouTube, information is below. You can click my Patreon link as well as that join button to join via YouTube. But to each and every one of you, Kaya B, Ghost Junk, Battle 66 Panda, Reaper Scoob, Billy, Kevin, Locksmith, Prime Time, X11, Rick Curtis, Michael, Jimmy, Goonish Lurker, Josh, Louis Logics, Arthur, Comic Toby, Charlie, Luis, Peter, Blackout Comics, B Moy, Tony, and Chris. Thank you all so, so much. Ah. All right, everyone. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Can't wait to count down five through one with you all. Thank you all for watching. Be well, and until next time.